This is Defender Radio. Defender Radio is brought to you by Gates Wildlife Control and the Association for the Protection of Fur-Bearing Animals. It's the week of April 6, 2015, and I'm Michael Howie, welcoming you to our YouTube edition of Defender Radio. They are our best friends, our family, and our own personal heroes. Dogs have become a part of everyday life for millions of Canadians, from sharing our homes and our time to our pillows and our hearts. With so many people profiting from this companionship and our quest to perfect the relationships between ourselves and our pets, there's sure to be some bad eggs. Little dogs with big barks, as it were. And then there are those who rely on modern science coupled with compassion to find the truth about dogs and how we can live fulfilling lives for both us and our canine companions. One such modern savior of dog lovers is Jean Donaldson. Born in Montreal, Jean has become known as an authority on dog training and behavior through her ongoing study and growth, both of the practice and the science of her trade. Jean joined Defender Radio for a special 50-minute interview to talk about dogs, the evolution of behavior models from B.F. Skinner to Walt Disney and beyond, breaking through the media hype of certain celebrity trainers, and she even took time to answer questions from our listeners and supporters. Let's get started with this special For the Love of Dog episode. Your book, The Culture Clash, which is the one I have in front of me right now, I, we've got a couple of your other ones on uh, specific trait training, um, but uh, you open talking about Walt Disney and B.F. Skinner. Um, I know. And this one is particular of interest to, to myself and I would think to our, to our entire audience with the fur bears, because we're constantly talking about anthropomorphism we're constantly talking about science versus ethics versus emotion um could you break down your your thoughts on this walt disney versus bf skinner topic i think that there's this mistaken idea that science because it's called therefore it is um, necessarily going to have negative impact on animal welfare, um, but, you know, sort of warm and fuzzy ideas um, about dogs are somehow that there's, it's just bundled without, you know, no thought goes into this, I don't think. It's, it's strictly intuitive that that is somehow about kindness, about good, about all that is wonderful. And I, and I worry about that the same way as, you know, we worry in our society about the impact of supermodels, you know, who are photoshopped on young girls. You know, I think that that happens to dogs to a certain extent. Um, and in sort of this culture that we live in, where there's not a lot of good information in the popular press about dogs, um, I think it's not to their benefit at all to overestimate certain qualities about them and to underestimate others. Uh, and I think this is huge and kind of tragic irony that if you take what's now, you know, called applied behavior analysis, which is where you really sort of break down behavior and try to, um, you know, the more sophisticated practitioners um, out there, try to modify behavior and give the animal an enriched environment where we really are sensitive to to, okay, so what is this species and what do they need and how can we try to not wipe things out of their life and how can we make them not have to live in fear and, you know, can we recognize when they are fearful in the first place? To me, that seems far more sensitive and far more um, kind than to assume that they're just like us to assume that they're trying to put one over on us, to try and sort of keep in their place, and then to spin narratives um, about how that's sort of in their interest. And um, I find that sort of almost kind of creepy mm -hmm. in a way. Well, and it's it's very interesting uh, reading through your, your discussion on this in the books, um, because you take arguably one of the more brilliant psychologists of the last hundred years, um, and, you know, one of the fathers of behaviorism, and you compare him to Walt Disney, um, which yeah, I kind of find amusing on the face of it, but you actually do so in such a, 
a wonderful tone and say, he's not wrong and he's not wrong, but neither of them are right. And you, you make the point that dogs are uh, innocently selfish. Selfish, sorry. Um, how, how do you explain that to a lay person? I, I think it's, I mean, I think the word selfish, you know, there is sort of the, the, the connotation in our society, the, kind of the pejorative use of that where somebody is therefore narcissistic, or it means that they don't care about anything or they haven't got any positive emotions. Um, and I think I mean selfish kind of in the way that, you know, a five-year-old child might be sort of, you know, very, you know, simple. I mean, they, they're not power hungry um, and they're not really living um, this sort of this this really kind of pernicious idea that dogs primarily their their main motivation in life is to make us happy I mean I think dogs do like when we're happy um, because primarily that you know nothing bad ever happens to them um, but uh, you know that the dog doesn't have any inherent interests the dog isn't an agent that the dog is lying on the sofa in order to sort of you know, send a message to the owner, to get back at the owner, to climb some sort of imagined hierarchy, as opposed to, well, the sofa is more comfortable than the floor, and that the dog might actually want to be comfortable, or that the dog steals a sandwich because the sandwich really tastes good, and and dogs evolved. Um, you know, the best intelligence that we have is that they evolved as scavengers. And why wouldn't they do that? And dogs like to play because it's enjoyable. Um, that if we recognize that they are these independent organisms, they're gonna you know have function properly in the world, which means they're gonna pursue um, the things that animals pursue, including us. I mean, we're animals as well. Um, that we can then. It, to, to my mind, it makes it far richer, it makes it far more interesting, um, you know, to sort of acknowledge that and then see, okay, so if we do want to help them live more successfully with us, um, and we don't want it to be just this this kind of blatant subjugation game where the dog is, you know, to, you know it, this obsession that people have with packs and with dominance and with leadership, um, as opposed to, well, what would you like this dog to do? There's some things that he does. You don't want him to pee in the house and you don't want him to be using his teeth on people, you know, et cetera. Are there ways to accomplish that goal that are more friendly, friendly for everybody concerned? And of course there are. Um, but to find our way to that, ironically, the way to do that is to really get into um, sort of how to modify behavior. And, you know, chapter and verse has been written on that. It really seems a, a terrible shame to not make use of that information. Want more from Jean? Check out academyfordogtrainers.com or just Google her name. Visit us at furbeardefenders.com to hear the full-length interview, get recent blogs, and more. Until next time, this is Michael Howie reminding you to stay informed and stay strong.